guys, and welcome to my channel. My name is Erin McGough. I'm a filmmaker and educator living in New York. And today we're talking about three personal finance principles that everyone should learn in their 20s. So before we dive into the three principles, I just want to say one thing first. Talking about money on the internet can be really difficult because I don't know you. I don't know the person watching this video. I don't know if you grew up on the streets, moving around, living paycheck to paycheck, or if you grew up in the suburbs with an allowance and your parents paid for your college. Everyone comes from different backgrounds and useful financial education has to meet you where you're at. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. It is simply education. If you want specific financial advice for your scenario, I highly recommend going and talking to a fiduciary, somebody who is licensed to help you with your finances. Despite what many people might tell you, financial advice is subjective. Take any one online financial guru and I'll give you 10 that disagree with them. So as always, I highly encourage you to get advice from as many sources as possible. Listen to what you hear repeated over and over and over again, do the math yourself, and then go with your gut. And also, before taking financial advice from anybody, always think about their intentions behind giving you that advice. Literally anybody can call themselves a money expert. I can just start off this video by saying, hi, I'm Erin and I'm a money expert. <laughs> There's no law, it doesn't mean anything. Of course, there are so many awesome online financial educators, but there are also a lot of frauds making a ton of money off of vulnerable people's lack of financial literacy. Not to scare you too much, <laughs> heed my warning. So I want you to get in a headspace. I first want you to think about your emotional relationship with money. Money is amoral. Money is not good, it is not bad. You can do good things with money, you can do bad things with money, but money itself is just money. And much of how you feel about money was determined in your upbringing. So I just want you to know that the way that you feel about money is not your fault. However, the way that you treat your finances today as an adult is 100% your responsibility. But the fact that you're watching this video shows me that you're probably doing better than you think you are. Okay, principle number one, the 50-20-30 rule. The 50-20-30 rule is a classic, very basic, personal budgeting method. It goes like this. So when you get your paycheck and you already paid your taxes, 50% of that paycheck should go towards your needs. So things like your housing, food, utilities, gas, etc. Then 20% of that paycheck should go towards savings or paying down high interest debt. And the remaining 30% can go towards your wants. So new clothes, vacation, going out to eat, and all that fun stuff. It's not something that you need to follow or that's even possible for many people to start following immediately, but it's generally regarded as a great baseline if you just don't know where to start. So if you're looking to get more on top and in control of your finances, I would recommend sitting down in your kitchen, lighting some candles, getting a nice drink, opening up your online banking account, and then picking a typical month. So not a month where you went on vacation or a month where you won the lottery, but a typical month of spending for you. And line by line, write down each expense and put it in each of the categories, 50, 20, 30. And see if maybe you already line up with a 50, 20, 30 rule, but maybe you don't. Maybe way more of your expenses are going towards your needs or way more going towards your wants so you're not saving at all or maybe you're saving too much. It's just a great snapshot to get a feel for your overall budget and finances. And it's something I definitely recommend that people do first when they're just getting into the space. Principle number two is to live below your means. The thing about rich people is that yes, they do get rich from making a lot of money, but they don't build wealth from making a lot of money. They build wealth from keeping a lot of money. In 2021 to 2022, the average NBA player made $8 million per season. This means that over the course of an average NBA player's career, they're gonna make around $35 million. More money than you can imagine, right? I mean, definitely enough to fund the rest of their life. However, what would you do if I told you that 60 to 65% of NBA players go broke within the first five years of retiring? That's because if you spend what you earn, you will always be broke. It doesn't matter if you're making $5 and spending $5 or if you're making 5 million and spending 5 million. This is the basis of financial literacy. You should always live below your means. Spend less than you make. It's like this in a lot of areas of life. You know, it's easy to lose five pounds, but it's hard to keep five pounds off. It's easy to go viral online one time, but it's hard to build sustainability as a creator. It's easy to fall in love, but it's hard to build a long lasting marriage. However, the best things in life aren't easy, but they're worth it. Principle number three is to understand investing and the power of compound interest. Investing, that's what rich people do. 
Nope, anybody can invest, and it's how rich people got rich in the first place. And it's how people are still building wealth today. Here's what you need to know about investing. If you have money sitting in a savings account in your bank right now, it is actually losing value. Well, technically it's purchasing power, but yes, maybe $50,000 is sitting in your savings. That is fantastic. But in a few decades, because of just inflation, which just happens no matter what, that $50,000 is actually gonna feel a lot more like $25,000. And that's because it isn't growing with the economy. Investing isn't some get rich quick scheme. It's just a way of making sure that your money is growing with inflation, with the economy. The second thing that you need to understand is compound interest. This is something that I feel like a lot of wealthy families teach their kids, but a lot of middle and lower class kids like just never learn about. Albert Einstein himself once said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather me hand you a million dollars in cash right now, or would you rather me hand you a penny right now and for the next 30 days, double that amount every single day? So today I hand you one penny, tomorrow I hand you two pennies, the day after that I hand you four pennies. Which would you rather have, the million dollars in cash right now or a penny doubled for 30 days? Many people, of course, choose the million dollars. Who doesn't want a million dollars in cash right now? That's amazing. But if you chose the penny, you would have more than five times the amount of money. Over the course of the 30 days, I will have given you over $10 million. At first, the penny is growing very gradually and you're like, oh, this is funny, you know, I have eight cents. This is fantastic. That person is a million dollars. But if you just wait, it becomes an exponential curve. It's compounding 100% every single day. And eventually that makes you very rich. So of course banks aren't compounding your interest 100% every single day, but the penny versus million dollars story is a fantastic way to just introduce people to the concept of compounded interest. This is how rich people just keep getting richer without even working. This is how poor people just seem to not be able to get out of debt. And this is how banks stay rich. Another important thing to understand around investing is that time is your most valuable asset. They say time in the market is more important than time in the market. So a lot of the times when people will start investing, they'll think, oh, I'm gonna buy when it's low and I'm gonna sell when it's high and I'm gonna buy it on this day and sell on this day. But any, any wealthy person will tell you that that is not the way to build wealth or get rich. It's important to start investing as early as you possibly can. There is no better day to start investing than literally right now. Because the longer that you have the money in the market, the longer that you're doubling those pennies, the more money you're going to have. So let's look at a real world example real quick. A Roth IRA is a type of account in the United States that people can open up and contribute a maximum amount to every year. Then they can take the money that's in that account, they can invest it in the stock market, and then when they retire in their 60s, they can cash out and not pay taxes on all that growth. That is a pretty beautiful and amazing thing, and that's why you might hear a lot of people talk about a Roth IRA. So let me show you why investing right now should be a huge, huge, huge priority for you. So let's say you use a Roth IRA account to start investing at 21 years old. And let's say that you contribute the maximum amount every single year. For example, the max amount this year is $6,500. And let's say you keep investing that amount every single year until you hit 65. And let's say your rate of return, what you're making from the market is around 8%, which is the average return. So you've been doing this for years. And when you get to 65, you have saved up 286 thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Good job. But wait, you put that money in a Roth IRA and then you invested it in the stock market. Oh my gosh, you have way more money than that. Because that money grew on top of itself year after year, you have $2.6 million now, which you can take out completely tax-free because you started investing early and you used a Roth IRA account. Now, if you're watching this video and you're like, Aaron, this was great. I'm looking to take the next steps. I want somebody to walk me through how to invest. I partner with financial experts and educators to host free financial literacy webinars for y'all. So go to advicewitharon.com slash money to sign up and I'll send you an email when we open up the waitlist for our next webinar. I partner with people that one, I really trust and two, give you tangible steps, like literally show you, go to fidelity.com, open an account, click this button, click this button. Because I know when I was first learning all this stuff, I just got so annoyed at all the jargon and all the vagueness, like, oh, just invest in the stock market. And I was like, literally, where do I do that? Like, do I have to go to Wall Street and like knock on someone's door? So that's it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to subscribe and follow me on Instagram and TikTok for daily career and life advice. And remember, you got this and I'll see you next time.